Good morning. Today is March 22nd, 2019. My name is Judith Jenkins, a volunteer with the Hanford branch of the Kings County Library Veteran History Project. Would you please state your full name? Raina Renee Montoya. Good morning, and thank you for being with us. Let's start the interview with some background information, if you can, and about your home and family. So where are you from, Raina? I was raised in Tulare, California. Okay, your parents still living with us? Um, my mother is, my father has deceased. I see. What do they do for a living? Um, my mom, she is actually retired um, from Kings County Office of Education. She was a translator for the Kings County. Oh, excellent. Do you have any siblings? Yes, I have <clears throat> three sisters and one brother. Are they older than you or younger? What's their age? I have um, a 50-year-old sister, a 49-year-old brother, um, a 40-year-old sister, and then there's me, and then I have a younger sister who's 32, I believe. Okay. Did any of them serve? Or do any of them serve now? Yeah. Um, my younger sister. She's currently still serving. Okay, what branch? Uh, Army. Army, okay. So um, what did you do before serving? I was a CNA for at um, nursing homes. Okay, in your hometown? Um, actually in here in Hanford, California. Okay, okay. And please state again, what branch uh, of service did you serve in? Army. Army, okay. So you were enlisted, not drafted, correct? Enlist enlisted, yes. Okay. Uh, what inspired your choice of joining the Army? Um, my dad, um, he was actually enlisted as well. Mm -hmm. And then um, my younger sister, she had just got back from boot camp. Okay. And she let, she told me about her experience. Okay. So I decided to join. Okay, so it was a positive one she liked? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So how was the boot camp experience for you? It was horrible. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. What happened? Well, um, first I had the depression because I left my um, then three-year-old son mm -hmm. at home mm -hmm. and so I was missing him like crazy mm -hmm. and then uh, <clears throat> the second day we did a victory march mm -hmm. and I actually sprained my ankle so the entire boot camp I had to pass everything on a sprained ankle so I kept re-injuring it because I kept needing to run and I kept needing to do all the trainings and so <laughs> I didn't want to be uh, recycled um, that means I would have to redo the and entire again, yes the oh, yeah because yeah. if we didn't pass one um, training then we had to be recycled and we'd have to start all over again okay that's <clears> so fun well tell me a little bit about your DIs or your instructors while you're in boot camp oh god um, they were horrible. <laughs> okay. I thought they hated me. Okay. Um, personally. They would personally. Okay. I <clears throat> I thought that um, because whenever well because of my sprained ankle I had crutches mm -hmm. and um, sometimes you know I'd get a little tired and kind of lean on the wall mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they would pass by me and they would say oh why don't you just die already. But in, at the end, they ended up um, giving me like a certificate and saying that I was the one who um, they believed that would pass on a sprained ankle. And th they believed that it, they didn't tell me all that bad stuff, right. that I would just be, I would just like give up. Give up. Okay. But since they did, I wanted to prove them wrong. And they said this, they seen that in me. Okay, so let's um, let's talk a little bit about your military life and just into it besides the uh, <coughs> camp training. <laughs> um, actually, it's weird, but I actually love military life. Mm -hmm. um, I was always trained to lead, I yes. believe. So um, I was I kind of always had the leadership roles, <coughs> and I. Um, I 
I guess I always like being the boss. <laughs> okay. So I always enjoyed it. I always yeah. like giving the orders. I liked people falling mm-hmm. and, and paying attention and doing what I say. That's why we got some <laughs> great military leaders today. <clears throat> so what did you do? What did you do? Yeah. <laughs> what did you do when you all leave? Well, when you finally got to that point of having the um, I first, I've always been with the National Guard, so we kind of, we've always had like just start drill weekends, and then we would have like our uh, few weeks of training uh, okay. outside of our unit, and okay. then, um, so our leave was always given to us, and with that, we had a lot of days of leave, so I kind of just lived my life, okay. and then when I'd come to drill, i just be a different person. Okay. And then... Um, because of what you had to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because when I was home, I was home, I was mm-hmm. mother, working, do whatever I had to do, and then when I would go to drill, then all of that was behind me. Okay. It was left at the door, they would say, and I would just be... I guess some of them would say mom, and call mm-hmm. me mom, because I was the one telling everybody what to do anyways. So. Okay, the leadership. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me let me see if I understood this. She went through basic training, boot camp. Um, you came out and you were active duty. No. Oh. I actually did um, basic. Um, then I did AIT, and then I did be fit, and then I came out, and then I was um, drilling on a drilling status. And about two years later is when I actually became uh, active. Okay. But that was active in the States. Okay. Okay, so did you have any additional specialized training when you got out? Um, I took a lot of different, uh, I did like amun- ammunition, carrying, tra- um, training. Um, I did um, the assist course, um, which was helping um, Helping, um, I guess, any military or any any um, veteran, um, talking them out of committing suicide, okay. I guess. Okay. And then um, I did the UPL courses, um, leadership courses, which was testing people for um, like substance or something. No, like, like substance. Um, oh, substance use. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we, we would always have to, um, every drill, our um, soldiers would have to take a test. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And this is on the weekends when you did your drill, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, you didn't do any deployment no. uh, for combat operations or any of that, so that's no. good because you went straight to the guard. Yeah, everything I did was in states, so I even, like... Um, when I would be on orders, I would go to like say Utah, okay. um, Alabama, okay. um, North Carolina. State side, also state mm-hmm. side. Okay, I understand. So, with this type of assignment that you do on the weekend with the guard, what kind of stressors do you experience? It's a lot of information, a lot of people you have to get a hold of. Yeah. Well, I would keep in contact with, um, like, at the very at the very beginning, it would be just my squad. Okay. And then um, later became my platoon, okay. and then um, so in my squad there would be like a minimum eight pe- eight people, and I would always have to know where they're at, or always have to keep in contact with them, make sure they're okay. Accountability. <clears throat> yes. Okay. And then um, if they didn't show up or anything like that, then I would have to find out where they were. Okay. And then just the. Did you have a team to go with you to do that particular action? I would have. I would send out. I would send okay. out okay. Um, at least a minimum of two okay. soldiers to go All right. to their house and knock on the door. Okay. How would you say this experience or these ongoing experiences impact your life today? Um. I guess. I'm not afraid to say what I need to say or want to say. Okay. Um, I'm not, to me I used to be quiet or 
maybe not so quiet, but I would always feel like, okay, maybe I need to have like a backup to come with me or whatever. But now it's more like, no, this needs to be done. This needs to happen. This is the way it's going to be. Um, I don't want to hear anything about it. And your leadership ability. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Tell me about your uh, military friendships. Did you got like when you went through basic or something like that? Um, to me, I didn't really have any. Okay. Um, I didn't believe, which I regret now, but I didn't believe that they were my friends. I was there to do a job and I was, wasn't there to make friends. Professional. Yeah. Okay. Um, your family, do you still stay, I mean, at the time when you first left, before you went to the guard, did you stay in touch with your family? Um, for the most part, yes. Some of them? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you have any specific memories that stand out during your time of service that still impact you today? Positive or negative? Um, I believe it's when I was, um, I was only, I believe like a PFC, um, I was told to lead the platoon. They told me I had to, I didn't have a choice because it was a group of um, uh, male soldiers that hated to be led by a female. So having to deal with that, um, at, that's when I was kind of scared to go up in front okay. of everybody and I had never done it before, but they, they pulled me out of the platoon and stuck me right in the front and from that point on I had to leave the platoon. What does PFT mean? PFC. PFC. Uh, <laughs> private first class. Okay. So you were awarded medals and citations during your time period that you were in yeah. the military. Um, Can you list them? The Army Achievement Medal. I had the expert um, the for weapons qualification medal. Um, I had I had a few others. It was for like WLC Warriors Leaders Course, okay. and then for um, ALC mm -hmm. and. Um, Mm, I had the Good Conduct Award and... You say you do it now. Good Drill. Um, I do. Okay. And then um, Drill Attendance Awards and... Um, you got quite a few. Yeah. I have a few others. I just don't remember what they are. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Do you have any... Uh, uh, just want to ask you uh, on the side. Do you have any opinions about like our fallen comrades, the information that you hear? you know, when you were in the military about other comrades that, that, that had lost their lives while they were serving? Yeah, that's one of the things that stands out too is we did have, um, we did have a soldier that did commit suicide right. while we were still drilling. And then we, um, we found out about it at drill and I had to be the one to tell the entire platoon um, that we lost someone in our in our ranks so mm -hmm. um, it was only one person one soldier that was the one that stood out there was also another one but it wasn't part of your platoon my platoon yeah okay okay so I can only imagine that each time that happens is totally different but you have to handle it in the same way correct mm -hmm. okay and Okay, so uh, what is your readjustment to the civilian life in this way? Since I know you're guard, how does how do you balance like your regular life, what you do outside the military, and okay, that would be your civilian and your military duties that you have being leadership while you're doing them on the weekends. And is that once a month or twice a month? Or it would be once a month, um, but when I started doing active, it was. Um, 24-7 mm -hmm. so um, I don't know how you would like are you talking about just the drill part or are you talking about with the active both just the drill part a I thought it was part? pretty simple yeah. mm -hmm. but when it became active it was pretty hard because um, it seems like they would need me all day every day and then my home life was you know, I became the working person <laughs> in the family, and then. So, did that have a ne negative impact on your family? 
Yeah, I believe so. Um, I seen my kids less. I wasn't going to their games as much or picking, I wasn't the one picking them up from school and it just affected a lot because um, it seemed like I just wasn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. How'd you turn that around? Um, if you don't want to share. Well, you know, I kind of didn't fine. have a choice, but my orders ended and then, um, you know, I, ETS, got okay. out of the, okay. um, the army. So um, once that came, it was hard, um, but eventually I kind of started putting myself back out there and I don't know, I guess it was a little hard. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. No, that's, that's just fine, you're doing just fine. Do you recall the day your service ended, or what year it was? Um, it was in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, I really, it was kind of like a, like dang, like. Like what? Like dang, like I'm no longer oh. part of the army anymore, mm -hmm. but. Um, because my orders had ended before that, um, I believe it was like a couple months prior to that. I kind of... Your official orders you need? Yeah, okay. my official orders. Okay. I kind of I kind of adjusted to knowing that my, um, my, my enlistment was coming to an end period. Okay. okay. So, I started going back into school and stuff like that. Okay, okay. So then I'm, it seems like I'm understanding you had an easier adjustment. Yeah, you had your I did. You yeah, it. yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so that um, do you still stay in touch with uh, your other um, your other friends that was in your platoon? Any of those? Or no. Do you go to any kind of like uh, uh, social functions that you know people who get out sometimes still hold after you know to keep up uh, keep up with each other? Do you have anything? Like not not with with my units prior mm -hmm. um, just I guess just with fellow vets that um, I guess we kind of were at the same place but at different times mm -hmm. um, but that's about it mm -hmm. okay so what was your okay you spoke up you spoke about your family life and your children <clears throat> but can you state again please what was your occupation after service um, I was a construction equipment repair um, for the drilling side, and then I was the uh, warrant officer candidate school administrative assistant okay. for the active side of the Army. Okay. So you said you continued your education, but was it supported, is, is it, or was it, or is it still being supported uh, through the GI Bill? No. I did um, cosmetology. Okay. And that wasn't covered by the GI Bill. Okay, okay. Um, when I just want to step back just for a few minutes, and when you mentioned that you had gone back to school after uh, the end of your service period, so what did you major in? I did. It was the cosmetology. The I had cosmetology. started. Okay. Yeah, That's I had started okay. the cosmetology class. Okay. Okay. So now for um, the veterans here in California. <clears throat> You're with the group that you, you had uh, mentioned that you work with your husband for the group. What is your specific, uh, what is your specific position or job in that? I'm the junior okay. advocates program coordinator. Okay. Um, I actually started the first junior advocates in the state of California, mm -hmm. and um, it's it's um, the descendants of a veteran or active military member okay. that are between the ages of 5 and 17 okay. and they can um, join and then they go and volunteer, they help set up and with like in April they're going to go help at the, the Fresno VA okay. um, set so, up and um, I guess hand out food at a car show okay. and just kind of whatever they need help with they're going to they're going to volunteer with that and then um, they have their own, like president, secretary, treasurer. It's kind of like they have their own board. Okay. And they need the group. The the junior office. Yes. Okay. Okay. And how long have you been in that now? Um, about a year. About a year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's fulfilling. 
Oh yes, okay. I like it. <laughs> All right. Are the um, uh, the curiosity here is for the program? Are they do they have classes or something specific? Uh, group classes to help different people with different needs. Like say, if you have the adults PTSD. Mm -hmm. That would be one thing, and then you have your other things. Do you have specific groups within? That, do, that attend to this, or is it just one function that attends everybody at one time? Everybody uh, meets up once a month. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I believe, second Thursday of the month, mm -hmm. and um, we have a round table mm -hmm. at the end. Um, it was just brought in, and then whatever like needs that you need or whatever um, you need to talk about, mm -hmm. we're all there to talk about it, and if you need help, then um, we'll try to steer you in the direction if we can't help you ourselves. We're trying to um, create like little, um, like the coffee and camaraderie okay. at West Hills. Like you can go there and you can socialize and you could talk about, um, talk with other veterans and see what they go through and you know, kind of just socialize, I guess. So that is that separate from this group, or is that just an it's, attachment thing? To it's kind of like an attachment it? thing, yeah, okay. because um, one of the members, she holds that at West Hills. Okay. So she invites everybody to go out there. Okay. And then we also like to um, keep them active. Um, what do you mean by active? Um, say, <laughs> say, um, like my husband, he likes to take some of the vets out there and to go boxing and to go to the gym and okay. um, stay in shape. Stay in shape. And, okay, that's good. Health. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just stuff like that. And okay. All right. So I asked you a question about attending reunions or ceremonies, but it sounds like this particular nonprofit group that you're part of, that you really have the opportunity to meet so much more people. Yes. So um, that that's very positive, and, and I'm guessing that you probably have a positive feeling after you know that you can help somebody else, that you're there to give to somebody else. Yeah. So um, I, I was going to ask you how your military service affected your life, but clearly, clearly you have uh, established the fact that it, it's, in a sense, also very positive what you have. You said the beginning wasn't quite what you thought, but that you're able, like I said, to give to others <clears throat> this this group is, is much needed, I'm sure. And um, it's good that uh, the information is out there so that folks can learn to take advantage or pass it on to somebody else who might need that type of counseling. So then here's my question here. Um, because you had the positive and the negative together when you first went through training, okay, do you feel that the experience on the positive side that you, that you have gained in the training has helped you basically with this group? Oh yes. Um, with this group, they like people who will take charge and um, take on additional duties, even mm -hmm. like things that they don't need or they don't ask of you. Mm -hmm. You know, they like to see that you like. Say we um, we like to go out and we like to get or at least try to get like donors, sponsors to help with the juniors and with the um, with the post members. What kind of donors are you talking about? Like from commercial businesses or persons, people personally come in and donate? Both, okay. both. Um, we go anywhere, like say with the um, Just Lift um, and the PAL station, we go over there to try to see if we can, you know, get it meeting time or see if we could take the vets out there the juniors and get them to take like a little class and exercise and then and that comes with if they like it hey what if they want to get a membership there you know so that kind of helps out them as well as taking our members over there to enjoy themselves for a day or so okay so you have like mobile units to go to these classes or to these activities outside of centrally where you're based is that what you're saying? No, we well, we invite them out, and if they come okay. out, then they come out. Um, okay. We like to go as a group, um, but veterans kind of like to do their own thing too, so right. Right. they show up when they can. And right. So you, with the veterans that have gone through, that you have counseled in the past, 
do you see changes, positive changes within the veterans after you've offered, or you're available to offer this type of help to them? Um, I believe so. Um, we like to invite them to go out places, and I've always got positive feedback from it. Is there anybody in particular that stands out? My Theo Joe. Who? My, my Uncle Joe. Okay. Can you talk um, a little bit about that? Um, we invited him, <clears throat> we told him about it, okay. about the program, and right. um, he's always, you know, yeah, yeah, we'll go, I'll mm -hmm. go, I'll go. And usually he does, and, but then he'll just kind of back off of things. Mm -hmm. But with the AMBETS, he really likes it, and okay. he's actually always bugging me, saying, hey, when's the next meeting? <laughs> you know, am I forgetting something? Am I supposed to do something today? Right. And so, um, I just, I mean, he's always attending and he stays Good. after and he's talking with us for Good. over an hour or two sometimes That's and just cool. laughing and putting in his input. So, so it's, positive, it's been positive for him as well. Yeah. Because he gets to meet new people, mm -hmm. right? And it sounds like with the program that the door is open, but you're mm -hmm. not putting pressure on anybody. Am I spreading right. that correctly? No, that's perfect because okay. you don't have, you can go in there and you can just kind of scout out the meeting and not, um, not sign up or not, you know, sign your name on anything. You can just see how it is and if you like it. And if you don't, then you don't and walk away. And if you do, then come back. Mm -hmm. Okay, with um, the expansion of this program, um, do you have a specific goal of how many, like, uh, mobile units you can go out and reach other people that you haven't probably thought about now or have you had? future goals for your group as to where it could lead to of what it can accomplish? Well, um, we've kind of, we kind of want to hit every area that we can. And and, Take your time. and um, So like if you have, um, if you have groups here and you can see, you know, the impact that it has, and the impact is good, mm -hmm. okay, that um, I was wondering if, and, and this is just thrown out to you, like I said, if you're not comfortable answering, you don't have to, if you had like future goals where you could reach out maybe, because California is such a big state, and we do have so many veterans here, that you'd be able to uh, additionally maybe find other ways to reach people, you know, um, aside yeah. being on the internet, that can, that, they know that this program exists for them. Well, with my juniors, we're looking to expand, of course. Okay. Um, we want to get as many as possible and also start, diff um, um, like this is Junior Ambits of Kings County, and we okay. want to get them to go into other posts yes. and yes. throughout the state and just see yes. how many we can get. And with that, I've been asked to, um, once we get three sets of juniors um, okay. programs, mm -hmm. um, I've already been asked to be the junior junior events program corner coordinator for the state, um, so that would that would move me up. But that takes a process, and I need to go around, and I need to get out there, and I need to mm -hmm. get more junior events. Mm -hmm. So continual work and growth for sure, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, How does that? This is, this is just totally off the paper, but how do you feel in your heart when you know that you're able to help somebody and that it's like, that how, how does it impact you inside? Because some people can do things, and let me, let me explain why I'm asking this question. Some people can do things, vets can help other vets because they feel it's, it's something they have to do, mm -hmm. all right? Um, but how do you feel about it? I get the I get the feeling that 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 you're genuine about what you want to do, what you and your husband are trying to do. What what is what is your feeling inside when you can actually maybe even bond with the vet to I give think, them the information um, they need? I think the way that we are is we don't realize what we're doing okay. until it's like told to us, like. Do you realize what you just did, or like we're just you mean by the vet, or by um, any? I guess by anyone. Um, mm -hmm. Like say when we just go out there and help someone, and we didn't realize like um, like we just we just fed someone for 
when they hadn't ate in so long and they're really appreciative and we don't realize that like we're just we're just doing it you know and so That's um I guess with me like when I when I put together the junior ambits like I didn't realize like it was a they told me I was the first one in the state, but I didn't realize it like until they started giving me recognition for it. And I was like, wait, what did I do? You know, like, wow, okay, you know. But a lot of those, um, like some of the kids, um, they need the structure and they need yes. to be out there. And then it, yes. it gives them, um, future, hopefully, scholarships to where they can use it towards college. And okay. um, some of them, they need like volunteer hours and for, College, yes. high school, right, yeah, right, and um, um, <clears throat> like my cousin, she said that she put her kids in because um, they just wanted to see she they wanted her she wanted her kids to see positivity, sure, and that she would hope that they would actually join right at some point and just to um, be around people who care and want to see them do better in life. Okay, question here. When you said um, uh, the children and the ages, are these children uh, from the vet's family, or are these also including uh, just, um, I mean, other children outside of the, I'll say, like within the county? Civilians, but, uh, maybe? Yeah. Um, these are only um, children for vet, um, descendants of veterans or active okay. um, military right now, okay. and also deceased. Um, deceased, uh, mm -hmm. can you explain that? Um, we have a couple of children that, um, like their mother or their father, they're not military, okay. but their grandfather was military. All right. All right. And since um, their father's passed away, then they can be a member. I see. Yeah. Because they would have, they, if they were alive, they would have been able to be an AMVET member. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, so you still honor that yep. within family lineage. That's excellent. That's mm -hmm. excellent. Okay, um, is there anything else that you'd like to, to add at this time, you know, like for future generations who would be seeing this interview, what would you like them to know? Um, that it's person. an experience, for sure. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I don't know, for... Just say something on your mind. Yeah. I guess um, if you want discipline and, um, I don't know, my mind just went blank. <laughs> okay, all right, that's okay. That's good, that's okay. So um, I wanted to um, thank you uh, so much for taking the time for the interview. And above all, I want to thank you for your service to this country. And I want to also thank you from the Kings County Hanford library to take the time to be able to share this interview with us as well as the public and we appreciate all the time that you have helped to create an environment a positive environment with your group to actually help others that's a wonderful cause and that's very positive not just for you but for other people who need the help to know that there's someplace else actually to go thank you so much you're welcome